Hello and thank you for allowing me to join your bubble, be part of it. Today we're going to continue in our series on the I Am Sayings of Jesus. <clears throat> Last time we spoke about Jesus who, when he said, I am the bread of life. And today we're going to be looking at the next time that he said, when he said, I am the light of the world. And we find this reading in John's Gospel, chapter 8 and verse 12. I'm sorry, I, I'm a bit disorganised, as you can see, but um, let's not change things now. <laughs> anyway, if you'd like to turn to John's Gospel, chapter 8 and verse 12. And Jesus said to them again, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jesus said this following the encounter with the scribes and Pharisees who had brought a woman who was caught in adultery. They threw her at the feet of Jesus and tested Jesus by saying to him that she, in the law of Moses she should be stoned. And of course we know that Jesus replied to them, he who is without sin, let him throw the first stone. And they slunk away the oldest to the youngest. And then Jesus, who was the only one that actually was qualified to throw a stone at the woman, because he was the only one without sin, said to the woman, where are your accusers? And she said, they've all disappeared. And Jesus said, I don't accuse you either. Go and sin no more. And then he said, speaks this verse, which I will read again, because there was the, the crowd was stood around and the people that had brought the woman to the to, to the feet of Jesus had slunk back into the crowd. So now he's addressing them and he knows their hearts because he knows that their hearts are full of darkness. So Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Several years ago, we went to the beer quarry caves, Pam and myself, and the guy that was showing us around turned out the lights and it was pitch black. And I remember thinking at the time how terrible it must be to be blind and especially to be born blind, because if you're born blind, you've got no idea what anything looks like. It's bad enough to be um, blinded later in life, but at least you know what um, things look like so someone doesn't have to describe to you what a bird looks like for instance or a blade of grass or a primrose you still got it in your memory but if a person's born blind they've got no idea what things truly look like unless somebody tells them, tells them. now let me just take you to the next chapter um, chapter 9 and this is the story of a man who was born blind. Let me read to you. In verse 1 of chapter 9. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And then Jesus, when he had said these things, spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Now this, uh, <laughs> these first few verses of this story are always quite controversial with people. Who sinned, this man or his parents? And then Jesus said, um, no one sinned, but it was for the glory of God. And there have been so many um, sermons on this. But let me just tell you um, something that I, I think well, some, one of the one of the things that I think about this, why why these words are in the Bible. Now, John in in his gospel talks about the signs. He does talk about miracles, but he talks about the signs that Jesus did. For instance, the wedding at Cana in Cal Galilee was a sign that Jesus was the Son of God. 
feeding the 5,000 was a sign that Jesus was the bread of life. And so everything that Jesus did that is recorded by John is always referred to as a sign. And so what sign are we looking at here? We're looking at something which was more than a miracle. It was a miracle that the man received his sight. But on this occasion, why did Jesus spit on the clay? Well, do you know that the Bible tells us and John tells us this right at the very beginning um, that Jesus was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. This particular miracle, this sign was a sign that Jesus was the son of God and that he was also the creator. Because remember, Adam was created from the dust of the ground and Jesus takes the dust of the ground and anoints this man's eyes and he sees. Praise the Lord. So now let's go back to John chapter 8 and verse 38 again, because this is very important. Because in verse, sorry, not, not again, because we haven't read verse 38. I'm very sorry. Let's go back to verse 38 in chapter 8. Because Jesus claimed that he was the light of the world. And incidentally, when Jesus says he's the light of the world, he was talking about truth. Jesus is the source of all truth. But how do we know that this is true? Well, in verse 38, this is what Jesus says. I speak what I have seen with my father and you do what you have seen with your father. Now, the Jews believed that their father was Abraham. They were always claiming this. And of course, in a physical sense, they were. But Jesus told them on a number of occasions that their father was Abraham the devil himself. That's why Jesus says, you do what you have seen with your father. But prior to that, he says, I speak, and remember Jesus is the word, what I have seen with my father. And so Jesus could speak because he had first-hand knowledge. He was a witness, a true witness of the things of God. Because in declaring himself the light of the world, Jesus is saying that he is the source of all spiritual truth. The source of all spiritual truth. This really rubbed the um, Jews up the wrong way. Let me read on from verse 38. I speak what I have seen with my father and you do what you have seen with your father. They answered him and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. Remember the devil. And they said to him, we are not born of fornication. We have one father, God. You see, they were accusing Jesus of being a bastard because Mary was expecting Jesus before she was married to Joseph. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me for I proceed forth and came from God. But now I Sorry, sorry, let me read that again. I proceed forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Jesus only did the things that he saw his father doing. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my words. And then Jesus carrying on and Jesus says in verse 58, after a long um, discourse with the Jews, Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. In saying that, of course, he's declaring himself eternal God. Now, you see, the Jews love to talk about their heritage with Abraham. But Jesus could speak the truth 
because he is God and he knows all things and he is the source of all truth. In fact, Jesus alone is the source of all truth. We really need to get this into our hearts. Jesus alone is the source of all truth. Everyone else that comes and says anything contrary to what Jesus has taught is a liar. And we need to be on our guard, especially in these days. There's all sorts of groups. There's a divine light. There's all these different prophets coming and saying that they've got a fresh revelation. But Jesus is the source of all truth. Going back to verse 12 now of chapter 8. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness. He's talking here of Christians, but have the light of life. He's not just saying that Christians will have revelation. He's not just saying that Christians will know the truth. Although he's, of course, not saying that they won't know the truth. But what he's actually saying is but they will have the light of life. Who is the light of life? It's Jesus Christ living in us, God with us. Hallelujah. And that is why he leads us into all truth. Any ministry that we do outside of God is dead works, but it's Christ who does the work in us and through us. And we really need to take hold of this. This is why all the I am sayings of Jesus cannot be divorced from one another because every saying illustrates who Jesus is and what he does in the believer. Praise his name. Just as plants, natural plants, grow towards the sun, so do we grow towards the sun. And remember the light is truth. Now turn back to chapter 9. And you, you, those of you that know the story, but please do read chapter 9 right through, will know that the man got into all sorts of trouble once he was healed because the Jews were, were, were just trying to find ways of, um, uh, of criticising Jesus and they just were so annoyed because this man was healed on the Sabbath day and they threw him out. Even his parents were afraid to have much to do with him. Jesus heard that they had cast him out and when he had found him, he said to him, do you believe in the son of God? He answered and said, who is he that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, you have both seen him and it is he who is talking with you. He was talking with the son of God. Always reminds me of Mary um, on the Re resurrection Sunday. And he said and and Jesus said to him, you have both seen him. And it is he who is talking with you. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. And Jesus said, for judgment, I have come into this world that those who do not see may see and those who see may be made blind. Those who do not see may see. The moment the man said that he believed in Jesus with his heart, Jesus didn't tell him that he had to. Ask, ask him what good deeds he'd done. He simply said, believe in me. Believe in me. You know, when Jesus said about if I am lifted up on the on the cross, I will draw men to myself. The people only had to look to Jesus and believe in him like the people did in the Old Testament. When they saw the snake on the pole, they just had to look and live. He received spiritual sight. So the man born blind he was born blind twice when he came into this world because every person who comes into the world is born spiritually blind. This man was born spirit, um, physically blind as well, but now he is completely free and he can see spiritually and physically because he believes in Jesus. And then Jesus says that, sorry, the um, Pharisees say to Jesus who were with him, are we blind also? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remains. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Now I've got a few discussion starters here and please make a note of them. 
How much time do you spend looking and reading the news? How would you grade its truthfulness one to five? These questions are not easy because I have to answer them myself. How much time do you spend looking or reading the news? How would you grade its truthfulness? One to five. Right, second discu discussion starter. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. What does it mean to have the light of the world? That's chapter 8 and verse 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. What does it mean to have the light of life? Again, as Christians, we can still seem to be groping about like blind people, even though we have the light of life. Why is this? As Christians, we can still seem to be groping about like blind people, even though we have the light of life. Why is this? And another question, perhaps similar, but different. Finally, this other, this other, I shouldn't say question, should I? This discussion starter. We may not have been born physically blind, but we are all born spiritually blind. Why is this? And what's the remedy? We may not have been, we may not have all been born physically blind, but we have all been born spiritually blind. Why is this? And what's the remedy? Thank you. And I'll speak to you again next week.